Hey, College Heights kids, it's great to be with you today. Uh, I want to start today by asking you a question. And the question is, what is worship? I know that's a word we use a lot. We talk about worship God. Uh, but what does it mean? And here's kind of what I was able to come up with. Worship is showing and telling God how important he is to you. And it's showing and telling others how important God is to you. So we worship through studying God's word. We worship through prayer. We worship through singing, uh, singing praises to God. Uh, we worship by serving others. We worship by telling others about Jesus. Uh, there's a lot of ways to show God and to show others how important God is to us. And that's what worship is. I do want to show you this little game. This is a game you could play at home. Uh, and it may be a fun, little fun activity for you. But what I've done is I take, took every letter of the alphabet and I wrote them down. I know it's small, but you can see A through Z there. And this is something that you can do at home to just, uh, maybe you could do this with your family later. And it's a way to worship God. And it's just take every letter of the alphabet and think of a description of Jesus. Think of something that that Jesus has done for you uh, that maybe starts with each letter of the alphabet. And so when you don't know how to pray or you don't know what to pray for, uh, maybe you don't know, not sure how to worship, this is a fun way to get started on that. And so we could go through every letter of the alphabet here. We could start with A. Maybe the first thing that comes to mind is that God is awesome. And you could put that down on there. Uh, I know we recently celebrated Easter. What was the whole point of Easter? That Jesus is alive. Okay, and you could go through the whole, go through the whole alphabet that way. Uh, one of the songs we sing a lot together on Sunday mornings is that our God is a big, big God. You could put big on there to describe God. Uh, so that's something you could do. I do want to take a moment and I want to skip down to P here and say that God is a provider. And what do I mean by that? Uh, when I say that God is a provider, God has given us his word that we can study and know what he wants from us. He has provided that for us. We, uh, he has given us a church building. Uh, I know that we are used to all coming together in a big building and worshiping together. God has provided a place for us to do that and a place for us to all be together. Right now, we can't all be together. You may be at home right now, but God has provided this camera for me. He has provided the computer that you're watching this on. He has still provided a way for us to all get together and study, uh, even though we can't be together. Uh, our story today, and our story today, John. Uh, John, if you remember, John was somebody who worshipped. I love the ways that John worshipped Jesus. Uh, John was a very popular preacher, uh, and he had a lot of followers following him. Jesus was coming along, and Jesus was beginning to teach and preach and do miracles and everything. John was, or Jesus was gaining popularity, and John's followers came to him and said, should we be worried that he is more popular than you? And John said, no, absolutely not. He must become greater, I must become less. John 3.30 is the key verse here where, where John says, he must become more, I must become less. I love John's answer because even in his answer, even in the order that the words are in in the sentence, Jesus comes first. He said, he must become greater, I must become less. John didn't say, I should be less, he should be more. John didn't say, oh, it's not about me, it's about him. He put Jesus first. He said that Jesus comes, you know, he must become greater, I must become less. So to go back to this little activity, uh, I think if John were here with us and we said, hey, John, can you uh, come up with one for us? What do we always do? Well, as soon as I wrote letters up here, I know some of you were probably thinking, what about X? X is always a hard word to come up with. I think this is what John would, would possibly say when he was here. Whenever you look at a treasure map, whenever you are on a scavenger hunt, whenever you're playing games, 
what is it about the secret treasure that you're looking for? The big prize at the end. X always marks the spot. And I think if John was here, John would be telling us, hey, Jesus should be the ultimate treasure that you are looking for. Jesus should be what you are dedicating your life to. He should be the one that you're searching for, the one that you are seeking day in and day out. So always, always make Jesus the treasure that you seek. Hey friends, it's Miss Donna, and I have the privilege of reading your questions this week for small group time. I'm so missing that time that we get to spend together in our room, circled up on the carpet and passing out suckers when you get your questions right. But for now, I'll see you on this video. And I would like for you to go gather your small group, and that would be your family or your caregivers, um, possibly your siblings, maybe even your dog or your cat. And grab your Bible. I have mine. So go ahead and grab your Bible, and we will get started. I'm going to be reading the questions for first, second, and third first, and then I'll be reading the questions for fourth and fifth grade. Please feel free to pause this video anytime so you can discuss the questions with those that are in the room with you. So I do want to ask you one real quick question. Is John in the New Testament or the Old Testament? If you said New Testament, you get a sucker. I do want to ask you one more question though. Um, who wrote the book of John? Was it John, one of the 12 disciples, or was it John the Baptist? If you said John, one of the 12 disciples, you get a sucker. Good job. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to read your questions now for first, second, and third grade. So before I ask the first question, I'm going to read the verse. It's going to be uh, John 3, 22, and you can follow along in your Bible. I'm going to be reading from the NIRV. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the countryside of Judea. There he spent some time with them and he baptized people there. So your question is, where were Jesus and his disciples? Excuse me. What were Jesus and his disciples doing in the countryside? And you can pause the video if you want. Second question is taken from verse 26. They came to John, and here is what they said to him. Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan River is baptizing people. He's the one you told us about. Everyone is going to him. And I just want to clarify when they said, it says they came to John, they were, they were going to John the Baptist. So the question is, why were John's disciples arguing? The next question is going to be taken from John 3, 30 through 31 and 35. He must become more important and I must become less important. The one who comes from above is above everything. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks like someone from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above everything. The Father loves the Son and has put everything in his hands. Question is, what did John want to happen? And I've got three more questions for you. What does glorify mean? And why is it good to glorify Jesus? And another question is, when is it hard to glorify God? And Jesus. And the last question for first, second, and third grade is how can we learn to show humility? Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and read the questions for fifth and sixth grade. Why did John say Jesus must increase and he, John, must decrease? Who deserves fame and glory in our own lives, us or God, and why? And how can we point others to Jesus? All right, 
Those are your questions for this week. I hope you had a great discussion and I miss you all so much. I can't wait to see you again at church. Before we go though, I do wanna do uh, say a quick prayer for us. Father, thank you so much for this time that we've got to we've got to spend together. So thankful for technology and for the videos, um, even though we do not get to be together. Father, I just pray that you bless this time with each small group that is meeting in their home with their families. And um, I pray that we can learn to decrease so that Jesus, you, God, can increase. We love you and we thank you that we get to spend time together with you. And um, we can't wait to get back to church. It's in your name. Amen. Strong